Hey guys, it's me Crystal from Marching North and today I'm going to show you how to make some loom knit slipper socks. You'll find the full list of supplies down below, but to get started I'm using a sock loom. It has 24 pegs and this is made for bulky yarn. I also have the little hook that comes with it and I'm using Hometown Yarn by Lion Brand in the color Key Largo Tweed. You'll need two skeins of yarn to make two socks, so one skein per sock. I also have a stitch marker and I'm going to stick one here on my first peg and you'll also need another one or a piece of scrap yarn later for the heel. So to get started I'm finding the yarn that's in the center of my skein which is always a fun adventure. And then I'm making a slip knot. So wrap it around your fingers and then just pull a loop up through there to make your slip knot and tighten it up. Just like if you were crocheting how you would start with your crochet hook. Then you're going to slip that loop onto your first peg that you have marked with your stitch marker and tighten it up. And then just bring it around to the back of your peg and bring the little end on the back there. And now we're going to do an E-wrap cast on. So you're just going to start by wrapping around from behind on the first peg to the right. And then just continue doing that on each peg going around to the right. It's called the E-wrap because it looks like a lowercase cursive E. And you're just going to wrap all the way around and make, don't make it too tight, just tight enough. There's no slack. And then you're going to go around after you get back to the beginning, you're just going to go around again. You'll push that first row of loops down and then just E-wrap around each peg again above that. Once you get back to the beginning, it's time to start knitting off. So you're just going to take that bottom loop and you're going to bring it up over and off the peg. And I also like to do the last peg first as it kind of holds your yarn in place. So you don't have to hold on to your yarn the whole time that you are knitting off. But then just continue taking all the loops off from the bottom and over the top. Okay, so now we have our cast on row done and I'm just pushing all the loops down to the bottom. Now we're going to start our rib. So to do this, we're going to go knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. It's a knit one, purl one rib. So our knit is just going to be our E-wrap like we did before. So E-wrap that first one. And then you're just going to pull the bottom loop up and off to knit that first one. And now we're going to purl. So you hold the yarn in front and underneath the loop. And then you insert your hook down through the little loop that's on the peg and pull a loop up from the bottom. And it's going to look like this at this point. And then you're going to slide the original loop off of the peg carefully. And then you're going to slide the new loop onto the peg. And then you pull the yarn to tighten it up. And that is how you do a purl. So this is the two stitches we're going to do for this whole thing. So the next one you do an E-wrap knit again. And then you're going to do another purl. So hold it in front and underneath the loop that's on the peg. Insert your hook down through the top and grab that yarn. And you're just going to pull it up through that loop that's already on the peg like that. And then be sure not to twist it or anything. And then you're just going to slide the first, the original loop off of the peg and slide the new loop onto the peg and pull the yarn to tighten. And that is how you do the knit one purl one. So I'll show you some more of them just so you can kind of get the feel for it, but it becomes pretty easy once you get going. So just slide it down. Pull up a loop, slide the old loop off of the peg and put the new loop onto the peg and tighten it up. And you're just going to do that all the way around until you get back to your starter peg.
All right, so now we've made it all the way around and we've done our first row and we're gonna do 10 rows of this knit one, purl one all together. So starting back here on our first peg, you're just gonna knit and then purl and continue that around until you have 10 rows total. It's important to just make sure you knit on the correct pegs and purl on the correct pegs or else the, the rib won't come out right. But it's always pretty easy just to look and see where that starter peg is and then count from there if you lose your place. Just continue doing your knit one, purl one rib until you have 10 rows total and then I will show you the next step. Okay, so we've done our 10 rows of the knit one, purl one rib, and this is how to look at this point. So now we're gonna do just five rows of just regular E-wrap knitting. So all you do is just start here with your first peg and just wrap it like that. And you do that all the way around for each peg and then knit over all of them. And once you get all the way around back to the beginning, just start knitting over. All right, so that's one row. And you're just gonna repeat that four more times and then I will meet you back here. Okay, so now I've done the five knitted rows there, and that is just, think of this like the rib part is gonna go on your ankle, and then this one, these five knitted rows here are gonna be like right before the heel. I'll show you on this finished one I've got here. This is like where your ankle is, and then before the heel starts, there's a section here that just kind of makes it fit a little bit better. You can adjust that if you want it to be a little bit longer or if you want the ankle to be longer. Of course, you can do more than 10 rows there too, but this is how many I did to get one sock out of one skein of yarn. So it worked out just about perfect. Now we're gonna start on the heel. So I already have the first peg marked. So what I'm gonna do is count over to the right to the 12th peg, and then I'm gonna mark that peg as well. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the 12th peg. And I'm gonna put, I just have a piece of yarn wow. here because I don't wanna go find another stitch marker, but if you have another stitch marker, that also is great. I do, but my kids have um, taken them somewhere. So I have my 12th peg marked and my first peg still has my little stitch marker on it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do four rows that are just, we're gonna knit back and forth between these pegs and we're just gonna skip the rest of the pegs. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. And then we're gonna start decreasing for the second part of the heel. But for the first part, you just start here on peg one and you just knit across all the way to your other marked peg. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So that's what we do. We E-wrap to the 12th peg and then you're gonna knit that off. And this first one is always super hard for some reason. <laughs> There we go. It's just, it's really difficult to cut that loop off, so you just gotta kinda work it, but then after that, it's a lot easier. All right, so that's the first short row. Then we're gonna do another row going back the other way. So you're gonna, you're not gonna wrap the 12th peg, you're just gonna skip that one. So then you wrap the 11th 
Now we're going to be wrapping in this direction. So you go around the 11th peg like that, and then the 10th, and so on and so forth until you get back to the first peg. This one will be tricky again. But just pull it over and do that all the way down. Okay. And now our yarn is over here again. So now we're gonna go back the other way. And again, we're gonna skip the first peg because of where our yarn is located. Now we're just going to e-wrap around back to the 12th peg. So that's the third row and then we're going to do one more before we start our decreasing row. So I'll go back to the 11th peg and just wrap all the way back to the first. So that is the first half of our heel. There's like a little space right here on either side. Don't worry about that. We will fix everything. It all makes sense once we get the decreases done. But now we're gonna do the decreasing part of this. So to start, we're gonna take the loop on peg 12 and move it to peg 11. So to do that, you just put your hook up under the loop like that. And you're gonna carefully pull it up and then you're gonna just bring it, don't twist it or anything, and just put it on loop 11 like that. And you're just gonna scoot it down and we're gonna treat that like one loop when we get to it. So just e-wrap around starting on the second peg here. All right, so now we've wrapped all the way around and we're to this peg with two loops on it. So now we're gonna bring both loops up over to knit. So you can grab both loops at once and pull them over, but I find it's easier just to do them one at a time. So there, we knitted both loops off and then you're just gonna repeat going down the row, getting all your loops knitted. All right, so now we see there's no longer a loop on this first peg. So now we did that. Now we're gonna go back to our first peg. Now we're gonna take this loop and put it onto the second peg. So just scoop it up and hold on to it with your finger and then bring it over to the second peg like that. And then just slide it down. And now we're gonna knit around to that peg. So you're not gonna wrap around this first peg this time. And then you're gonna knit these, both of these loops off. So we're gonna try to do two at once this time, see if it works pretty good. And then just do the rest. So now we have an empty peg on this side and an empty peg on this side. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the stitch marker off because it always falls off on me if I don't. Okay, so now we're going to go over here and put the loop that is on peg number 11 onto peg number 10. And then now it'll look like this. And then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna skip wrapping the first peg and just wrap the rest of them until we get to that empty peg. And we got our peg with two loops and that's the last one we wrapped. So bring both loops up and over like so and then Continue knitting back across. Okay. 
So now we have two empty pegs on the side and one empty peg on this side. So now we're gonna come up back over here to side one. So we're gonna take the loop off of the second peg and put it onto the third peg. And then wrap again, skipping the first peg there. Okay, we're getting close. We have two empty pegs on this side and this side. When we're, we get done, we'll have three on each side. So you'll know you're done when you have three empty pegs on both sides. So now we're gonna take the peg farthest on the right and bring it to the next peg over. And then we're gonna skip the first one here and just wrap across. So now we have three empty pegs on the right side. So that's, we won't be decreasing any more over here. Now we just have to decrease one more time over here so we have three empty pegs on this side. So you just have to take this loop on the left, bring it to the loop on the right of it, and make one more pass. All right, so when all is said and done with this, we're gonna have six pegs with loops on them still here, and then we have three empty ones on the right and three empty ones on the left. And this is how it's gonna look. You're gonna see this big space here in the sides. So now, before we continue, we need to address these big gaps here on the side. So what we're gonna do is just take the loops here and we're gonna put them on the three pegs there. And you see it's not really cut and dried what loops you need to put on there. So what I like to do is I pick Whichever one looks like it's in the middle the most here, just pick a loop that looks like in the middle. So this one right here looks pretty centered, so I'm gonna stick that loop onto the peg like that. And then right here, I'm just gonna grab a loop here. And then over here, I'm just gonna grab one of these loops. And then it's gonna look like that. And then do the same thing over here. So now there's a loop on every peg and these spaces on the sides are filled in. You see everything is looking good. So now we're going to finish knitting this um, sock. The rest of it is just done with an E-wrap knitting all the way around. For mine, um, I did 25 more rows after the heel. So the heel's done and then I did 25 rows. And that fits me and I wear like a nine and a half, a US size nine and a half women's shoe. So that is how big it will be or that's how many rows to do if you want to get that size. If you want it to be smaller, you could decrease it by, um, you know, like maybe five rows, depending on what size you need. What I do is I just knitted until, you know, I got to about like here and I started trying it on. <laughs> I just stuck my foot through the whole thing here, and, or this way, through the whole thing and to see how it is. And then I just kind of eyeballed it and then just took note of it and it ended up being 25 rows fit my foot perfectly. But at this point, I'm just gonna do 25 rows of just regular E-wrap stitches. So first, what I'm gonna do here is, so I'm starting here, so this is now my peg one. You see my yarn's coming out here, and this peg right here will now be my first peg. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker back 
So it is on my first peg. What is now my first peg. It changed because of the heel situation. There. So I do recommend putting your stitch marker on your first peg so you don't have to wonder where your row ends and begins. And then you just start e-wrapping. And then just knit off. And the first row might be a little weird because of those loops that we did that weren't regular loops. So you can see they kind of sit weird. But after this row is over, the rest will just be normal for the rest of the sock. So the rest of this is very easy. And like I said, you can, in either direction it seems, as long as you wrap the same way each time, it doesn't really make a difference which way you take the loops off. And that's all we're gonna do for the rest of the sock. So that's row one. So I'm going to do 24 more rows for my pair. And then I will meet you back here and I'll show you how we're gonna finish this off. All right, I got my 25 rows done. So this is how it looks at this point. So now we're just gonna finish it off. So, and just for reference, this is how much yarn I have left at the end from one skein. So. You could still go a few more rows with one skein and get it a little bit longer if you have like a size 10 or 11 foot. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap the yarn around one and a half times, just so we know we have enough to finish it off without running out. So I just wrap it all the way around and then about halfway around again. And then mark that with my finger and then I just cut it right there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is get a large eye needle and you're gonna just thread your yarn onto it and then we're gonna get our sock off of the loom. So we're gonna start on the first peg and you're just going to pick that loop up and pull the yarn through and then you're gonna slide that loop off of the peg like that. And then do the same thing with the next one. And you're just gonna continue that all the way around. Okay, so now we have our sock off the loom. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cinch up the toe here. So just pull it tight. And then we're gonna just feed the needle down through the center and we're gonna turn our sock inside out. So now you're just gonna want to make sure you pull it nice and tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and feed the yarn around one more time with our needle, just so we get it really good and secure. Then you're gonna just pull really, really good. And we're gonna tie a knot here to secure our yarn. And once you get your knot tied, we're going to feed the yarn up and through just a few stitches. And I do this on the top of the sock just so you don't feel any weird bump or anything on the bottom uh, when you're walking in them. I don't know if it would really make that big of a difference, but I figure it never hurts to not make a big bump on the bottom. Okay, so once you get it fed through some of the loops, you're just gonna cut off your excess. And then we're gonna go back here and find the end from where we started, and we're gonna weave that end as well. So 
So I'm just gonna weave it down on the, where it'll be on the inside of the sock. Then you just go ahead and flip your sock right side out again. And if your end accidentally comes and pokes out the other side, just trim it off, which happened to me there. But then your sock is finished. Here is both of my socks together. See, they came out looking the same. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.